So we're going to continue our series regarding strengthen yourself in the Lord. As I said for a couple of weeks that everybody need God's strength. And the only way to have the strength of God is, of course, to draw in the presence of God. Amen? There are so many ways men are looking nowadays in order for them to get strength. Physically, they are willing to pay anything, buy something just to have physical strength. And you know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to our spiritual strength, you can't buy that in any store. When it comes to our spiritual strength, physical exercise is nothing. And that's the reason why the Lord said from his word that those who will draw near to me, I will draw near unto them. And we thank God for that wonderful song, Denisa, because everybody needs the strength that comes from God. When we are broken, when we are down, when we are shattered, we need to rise from the rubbles of all the frustrations and discouragement and distresses in our lives. And the only way where we can find comfort peace and restoration is in the presence of God. Why? Because he said, come unto me, all ye that labor, those who are broken, those who are shattered, those who are down, those who are hopeless, those who has no direction, and I'll give you rest and comfort because I'm your strength and I'm your strong tower and I'm the Lord who is your Savior. Amen. So this morning, let's continue our series Strengthen yourself in the Lord. So our topic for today is breakthrough moment at the prayer den. How many of you, you prayed this morning? And let me guess. Lord, thank you for the food. Lord, thank you I'm alive. Lord, thank you that I'm still strong. Thank you for my family. Most of the time, our prayer is centered to ourselves. And there's nothing wrong about it. But there are times you need to pray for someone. There are times you need to pray for somebody. And there are times you need to pray for a nation. There are times you need to pray for, um, for our situation in our society. Now, what happened here in this subject that I would like to share with you? Breakthrough moment at the prayer then. So I, I, I asked... How many of you prayed this morning? And many of you raise your hand. And how many of you pray regularly? Okay. How many of you sometimes you are tired of praying? So let's study the life of Daniel in the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Are you familiar with Daniel? He was one of the greatest heroes in the Old Testament, blessed by God, and he served for more than 30 years in the government. He was a government employee for several decades and served with three kings in three dynasties and he survived but not everything is okay because he been through a lot of um, challenges he been through a lot of obstacles and we thank God for many years he survived and he became stronger because of the mercy and the grace of God. And that's what I'd like to share with you this morning. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We ask the Spirit of God to be with us today. And we pray that your Spirit will continue to teach our heart and help us to understand your word. Father, let your name be exalted as we study your word. 
This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. How many of you have seen already a lion? Not on TV. Real one, okay? Lion. Have you touched them? Okay. So maybe you just saw a lion by the distance. Considered as king of the jungle, wild animal. Well, here, the life of Daniel, as I gave you the background of this, in the book of Daniel chapter 6. So these governors and satraps strong before the king and said, Thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that would whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Wow. Den is a shelter of lions. So these government employees, from governors to counselors, they conspired and presented a decree or a proposal to the king to have a decree that for 30 days, no man on earth will worship their God except King Darius. Otherwise, whoever not to follow that will face the consequence. And during that time, the consequence is death. Now, the Bible says in verse 8, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes or the Medes and the Persians which does not alter. So therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Then in verse 10, Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem and three times a day. Everybody say three times. I know that all of us, we eat three times a day, plus, plus, plus snacks. Uh, this guy, he prayed three times a day. He got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Now, the background of this um, subject. Daniel was an exile, came from Jerusalem together with thousands of Jews. And during that time, the Medes and Persia was the most powerful nation. And the empire of Medes and Persia was so vast, covering the Asian empire, going to south, some parts of Africa. And they were so strong, they were so powerful. And the king of Medes and Persia took slaves from different countries, and those who are wise, those who are strong, those who are youth, they were taken and um, helped them to grow in the culture of this nation and taught them how to be one of them. Daniel learned so many things about the culture, not only of the Babylon, but even the succeeding um, empire. Now at the point where King Darius was the one uh, who is in control of the whole land, Daniel was one of the um, governor, and he was about to be promoted as governor among governors. I mean, he, is, he will be the, uh, the caretaker of all governors. And when, when other governors learn that he, he is about to be promoted, many of them 
Not many, but all of them. You know, they conspired. It's unfair. He was not a Persian. He was, he's a Jew. And he's about to be promoted to be our leader. And that's not right. So the same attitude you can see in every ethnic groups. When somebody is about to be promoted or being promoted or at the top of his uh, career, people are trying to pull him down. Sound familiar? And it's happening not only during that time but even today. People are being promoted because maybe highly favored or maybe because maybe of talents or skills or whatever. But still, there are some people, they are not satisfied. There are some people, they are not happy with your promotion. And they are willing to do anything to pull you down, to destroy your integrity, and to look for any flaws in your life until such a time your life is destroyed. So this Governors, these people, they conspired and they look for Daniel's lifestyle every day and they found nothing. And one thing they noticed, he was not corrupt. He was not even involved to any scum or pork barrel. He was not involved in any kind of underground uh, projects. He was he, he was an honest employee of the government, and the king noticed all of those honesty and integrity. That's why the heart of the king was with Daniel, and is willing to promote Daniel to be governor among the governors. And those corrupt people who are always involved in all kinds of scum, they don't like it. So they said, let's bring him down. Let's bring him down. So since they have no power to give any decree, so they propose to the king. That kind of proposal is deception. Because at the back of the king, he thought that these people love him and they love to elevate King Darius as God. You know, people love power. People love affluence of, uh, affluence of man, clap of praise. People love to be, you know, uh, to be lifted up by men. But the Bible is very clear. I will never, God said, I will never give my glory to anyone. He was king during that time. And many nations are under his authority. And yet still, he was not contented as king of many regions, as king of many nations. He wanted to be God. See, there are so many people today. They are already promoted. They are already in that situation. They've been blessed with so many blessings and yet still not contented, still not satisfied. They want more. Hello, are you with me? They want more. So he said, okay, it's a good idea. Nobody will worship any other God except me. For 30 days, everybody must worship King Darius and he agreed and he put the signet ring. Once a king put his signet ring in a decree, nobody can break it. It must come to pass. It must be served. Then, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in, in his upper room, in his apartment, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. He knew that these people conspired against him. He knew that these people wanted to uh, destroy his life, destroy his integrity. 
but instead of raising his finger against them, because he has all the power to counter all the charges against him. He had the favor of the king and being one of the great advisor and governor of the king during that time, he has the power to mobilize the army. And yet, he never raised his finger. He never said anything against them. But instead, he went to his room and knelt down and prayed to God. What a good example. If there are people trying to put you down, you know, gathering all their forces to destroy your life, destroy your integrity, destroy your personal uh, life, don't raise your finger. God knows what's going on. He will vindicate you. Amen? And don't curse at the back of your mind. See, five things we can see in the life of Daniel. Number one, Daniel could not be stopped. Nobody can stop Daniel praying, looking to God, seeking God's space. He knelt down on his knees three times that day, as was his custom since early days. You know, if you are a prayer, per, prayerful person, you are a prayerful person. If you are a prayerful person during good times, you are also a prayerful person during bad times. So a prayerful person is someone who knew how to pray. Not only during everything is fine and okay, even during worst time. So he knew his priority. Whatever the situation, you must have that priority. Our priority is to not, not to raise our finger against someone who's trying to put us down or destroy us, but our priority is to seek God. And trust his way, his word, and his will. See, even with his life in danger, Daniel continued to pray. So why do you think Daniel places such a priority on his conversations with God? Because he knew God is in control. Amen? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So God demonstrated his faithfulness in Daniel's past that kept the young man faithful even in the present. So if you have encountered God in your past, in his faithfulness and his goodness, in spite and despite of many mistakes you have committed, don't you know God will always be faithful to you even in your present situation? If God saved you many years ago, if God blessed you many years ago, He can still bless you even today. Because our God is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the same God that we can trust. He is the same God that we can trust our past. He is the same God that we can trust our present and our future. So we can trust him every single day of our lives. So Daniel prayed three times a day. Historically speaking, the Jews love to pray. And we need to pray. There is power in prayer. So what is your priority in your life? If we are a true believer, God knows all the struggles that we have, that we need money, we need honey, we need whatever. And the Bible says, come to me. I am the source of everything. Daniel, he got all the power. He got all the power at his own disposal to use the army to counterattack 
the enemy, but he never used that. But instead, he relied on God because he knew that God is in control and he can depend on him. Hello, are you with me? The second one is Daniel got on his knees. He knelt down on his knees. He knelt down on his knees. It means what? His position. So how does position affect our decision? He knelt down. What does it mean when you kneel down? He never kneeled to anyone except God. In other words, Daniel acknowledged that the sovereignty of God is supreme to any king on this planet earth. And the mere fact that he kneeled down before the sovereignty before God and acknowledged his sovereignty, it means total humility and total submission to God's sovereignty. Hello, are you with me? In our priority, we must seek God. And in our position, we must humble before the presence of God. It is a position of humility. It is a position of submission. Telling God, Lord, I can do nothing except you do something. Lord, I don't have strength except your strength. Lord, I don't have the ability except your ability. Lord, I don't have power except your power. Lord, I don't have wisdom except your wisdom. I totally depend on you and I trust you every step of the way. Don't you know nowadays there are so many people they depend on their strength. Religion becomes information. And when you ask them, how's your faith? Well, it's good. So they are not talking about their relationship with God. They are talking about their information about God. So when it comes to a very, very dangerous situation, their life will become more disarrayed, distracted, distressed to the point of destruction. Uh, we thank God. The life of Daniel knew how to deal with the situation. He knew that his strength, his experience, his career, his position in the government cannot help him except he kneel down before the presence of God and submit everything in God's sovereign power. Church, I would like to encourage you. Have your priority in order. Let God be God first in your life. And always humble yourself before the Lord. Pride will bring you into destruction. But humility will bring you into promotion. The third one is this. Daniel gave thanks. The Bible says, he knelt down and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Imagine a person who is in trouble People conspired against him to destroy him. And yet, at that situation, he can still manage to pray to God and humble himself before the Lord and praise him. That's the third thing, praise. Don't you know that there is power in thanking God? That there is power in praising God? Many people, they love to praise men. But don't you know the Bible says when you praise God, God inhabits the praises of his people. In our worst situation, whatever we are in right now, when we learn how to thank God and praise his name, not only during Thanksgiving, not only during Christmas, not only during New Year or your birthday, but every situation, you know, whether you, ha you are facing all kinds of storms or Everything is like sunshine in your life. It's like everything is cool. Whatever the, the position, whatever the condition of our life, we need to learn how to thank God. Can you thank God with your millions? Oh, pastor, the problem is I don't have millions. How about can you thank God with your thousands? 
still you don't have thousands. Can you thank God with your hundreds? Can you thank God with your pennies? Can you thank God if you have problems? Oh, wow, it's getting louder. Okay. <laughs> Can you thank God if you are sick? In other words, thanking God does not depend on your situation. It does not depend whether you are rich or poor, whether you have job or you don't have job. It doesn't depend whether you are sick or not because thanking God is an attitude. Thanking God is a lifestyle. Thanking God is a way of life. He knelt down and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And that's why people are wondering why in the world you, know, you are not rich and still you can smile. You don't have a new car, you don't have a new house and still you can smile. Because deep inside of your heart is the joy of the Lord that gives you strength. And once a person is a person of thanksgiving, he is a person who is always willing to face anything. And for sure, God will bring him through in every situation. Amen. Even after Daniel read the decree that could mean death to him, he still praised God. Never blame anybody about your situation. Never raise your finger and say, because of you, look what happened to me. Because of this and because of that, see, I'm like this. Instead of doing that, he thanked the Lord. He praised God. He magnified the Lord. Because he knew after all of this controversy, after all of this conspiracy, there is greatest hope that comes from God. A greatest blessing that God prepared for him. The fourth one is Daniel did this since his youth. As was his custom since early days. That's why prayer is a lifestyle. Praise is a lifestyle because that's the pattern of a person who is prayerful, a person who is humble, a person who is always submissive to God's will, a person who is always thankful to God in whatever circumstances. So Daniel started praying at a young age. And this pattern of prayer shows a commitment and desire to pray to God. So what difference did prayer make in Daniel's life? He became more submissive. He became more sensitive to God's will. Instead of cursing, cursing people, he learned how to thank God. Amen? Instead of blaming others, he learned how to look unto God. Why? Because Jesus said, look unto me, for I am the author and the finisher of your faith. Now, what difference has it made in your life? Is your prayer life changing your life? Is your thanksgiving changing your attitude? So what was the biggest answered prayer you experienced before God? What is the greatest miracle in your life? People think that, people thought that the greatest miracle is healing of the body. The greatest miracle is being promoted in your job. The greatest miracle is, you know, having a great family. The greatest miracle is having great children. The, the greatest miracle is having many stuff of this on this earth. The greatest miracle is to have relationship with God. The greatest miracle is to have that salvation that God offered. Amen. And whatever we have are just bonuses. Oh, we love bonuses. Amen. But the main thing is the main thing. The main thing is God and it's our relationship. 
with God. And it's Him who will bless us more. Amen. That's the pattern of His prayer. That's the pattern of His praise. Although every time there is a problem, because that was His pattern, His lifestyle, if there is a problem in the family, never blame anybody. So if you have a problem in your family, don't blame your husband, don't blame your wife, don't blame your kids. Don't even blame yourself. But acknowledge there are shortcomings, there are mistakes, there are failures. It's part of our life. You have to acknowledge above all that there is God who is in control. Instead of blaming others, why not come to the presence of God and ask God for help? Ask God for guidance. The, the fifth one is Daniel asked God for help. The Bible says, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed. Petition. So this petition is not the same thing that we are doing. You are in America after three years, you petition somebody from the Philippines. All right. You submit all the papers to the immigration, you know, and you have to meet all the requirements. That's the petition that we understand. That this petition that we are talking about is our prayer unto God. And there are some requirements that we need to submit to our Heavenly Father. First is our relationship with God. The same thing that we petition someone in the Philippines, what's your relationship with Him? What's your relationship with her? Don't you know that relationship is very important? Don't ignore your relationship with someone. Don't cut or destroy the bridge because of something bad happened. And let go your loved ones. Let your relationship be strong. And that's how God demonstrated His relationship to us. Something bad happened to all of us. You agree with that? Something bad happened to all of us. What kind of bad thing happened to all of us? We are all sinners and come short of the glory of God. We are all candidates to go to hell because of our disconnection with our God. But God sent forth His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in order not only to reconnect but to reestablish and to restore everything so that those who are lost can be in the presence of God and experience once again that in spite and despite of many sins and shortcomings, God can accept them and bless them. Not by the virtue of your sin, but by the virtue of His love, of His mercy, and of His grace. And that's the reason why he petitioned. He knew he was facing a big time penalty for his debt. Everybody who doesn't have any relationship with God, they are going to face a big time penalty. And we thank God because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the greatest good news. So if you were Daniel, what type of help? Would you have asked? What do you ask help for now? I know everybody, we have our own problem. We have our own struggle. If we are going to list all the problems that we have, do you think you have more than 10? How many of you, you have more than 10 problems? Only me? But we thank God. No matter how many problems we have, God is still bigger. Than our, all of our problems. And you have to bring it to the very presence of God. And our greatest problem is our relationship. And that's how even at his early age, he see to it that his relationship with God is established. is strong. Why? Because he knew no matter what happened, his relationship will stand. It's like what we are talking every now and then, Filipino, cost, uh, Filipino uh, custom, our tradition. 
at the end of the rope, it's still the family that will help together. Hello, are you with me? It's still the family. Don't you know that at the end of all the controversies and conspiracies and scams, whatever tra they're trying to put in the life of Daniel, still his relationship with God will stand strong and forever. You see what happened? Those people who conspired, and then when the, the king learned that, so the king has no power anymore because it was already signed. So they cast Daniel into the lion's den. And if you have your Bible, um, king was so distressed. He can't sleep that night because he knew Daniel was at the lion's den. And he's thinking that, you know, oh my goodness, all the lions, they have great dinner. And he was in a hurry early in the morning. And if you can follow me, praise God. In verse 19, then at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. And the king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Maybe he was not expecting somebody will answer. Then all of a sudden, Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and shut the lion's mouths. And they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. When somebody is trying to put you down and destroy your integrity, can you stand with your integrity? Can you stand and say, I didn't do anything wrong. And I can't stand with my integrity. And I know God will protect me. So when the king learned the conspiracy, so all those people were thrown back at the lion's den. And the Bible says, And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the dens of lions. They, their children, their wives, and before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. What was the motivation of those conspirators? Two powerful spirit. First, envy. Second, jealousy. Don't you know if you are motivated by envy or jealousy? It will destroy you later on. It will destroy your life. It will destroy your future. It will destroy your family. And that's the reason why Daniel, at his very young age, he learned how to humble before the presence of God. Because the only way to overcome envy and jealousy, and of course, conspiracy is what, is what kind of spirit? It's a type of gossiping. Because they conspire, they talk one another. And they build up their case with deception. And this is something that we need to stop if we want more God's blessing. Amen? Are you, are you with me? Amen? How many of you want God's blessing? Of course, everybody. Praise God. Anybody here being uh, pulled down by somebody or anyone, you know, and trying to destroy your life, your family, your relationship, your husband, your wife, your kids? Praise God. Draw near to the presence of God. And I'll guarantee you, he is the one who will take care of you and bring you through in every situation and give you victory. No need to raise your finger 
against anybody or blame anybody, but instead look up unto God, the altar and the finisher of your faith. Amen. Shall we all stand?